Now, folks, 28 cars, or 29 cars set the field here tonight. Now, as we prepare to get ready, drivers, prepare for competition. Time to play the game. Time to play the game. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'd like you all that can to rise and stand. Gentlemen and ladies, remove your caps as we pay homage to the greatest country in the world, the United States of America. Can you see? What so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you would look this field over, look at all these beautiful race cars, this incredible talent, and join us in the four most famous words in motorsports on a three count. One, two, three. Gentlemen, start your engine. I'm the party star. Ready to do battle for a 125 lap feature event. The goal, $10,000 to win. Let's get the party started, folks. 29 cars on tap here. Lee USA Speedway, Rodfather Pro Stocks, $10,000 on the line. Ready to go. Engines are fired. Oil is hot. We're going to put some heat in the tires. And then we're going to release them, Charlie, for one. 125 
feature laps. The fastest fendered race cars in the region on the racetrack in front of you right now. On the pole for this one, the driver out of Berwick, like we mentioned, Joey DeWyron is outside Angelo Belsito. Nine cars were the infert from single car qualifying. Keep an eye on the driver. Somebody, you know, that up and comer, if you will, from the Vegas area, the two-time NASCAR Cup Series champion, Kyle Busch in the 8NC. Giving oh. props where props are due, the 25, and Sean Knight out of South Paris, Maine. He had to get a little push start. He's starting at the rear of the field tonight. Another driver to keep an eye out for. One many times here at Lee USA Speedway, the driver of the 12G with NASCAR experience himself, Derek Griffith. Another one, Wayne Hellowell Jr. in the 27. Many multi-time winner here at Lee USA Speedway. In addition to the former owner's son, uh, the <laughs> Eddie McDonald in the 17 there. Also, NASCAR super spotter Derek Nealon in the 90 car. We've got a stacked field here, folks. Trevor Sanborn, Evan Bollier, Corey Bubar, the $10,000 man, Casey Call, all shooting for $10,000 more here tonight. As hot laps continue, they're looking to put you can see the track photographer, Miss M, hanging out the window. Oh, we have Frankie Eldridge off into the grass here on the front stretch in the 09. That is not the place to start your race. No, you certainly cannot park there, folks. Uh, it is not recommended, at least. Uh, slick tires don't love wet grass, so we're going to have to pull the 09 of Frankie Eldridge out of the infield grass here and get this show on the road. Miss M, shout out to her hanging out of the pace car care, getting some action shots here of this beautiful Rodfather Pro Stock feature event lineup here. Randy, I'm excited. I'm giddy. I'm like a little kid up here. I am ready to go for the fastest fendered cars in the area, the Rodfather Pro Stocks. This is what you came for, folks. This is the show here at the New Hampshire Center of Speed. When these cats come by the next time, they get Frankie out. Whoop. Frankie's waving off the push truck. He may have something broke in the 09. He may need to have it lifted. Looking like we're going to need to tow the 09 off the, off the racetrack here. So as these drivers here going to continue to build heat in their tires and get some oil temp in these machines here, we're going to look over these beautiful, beautiful pro stock cars here. Gorgeous. What an incredible stacked field we have here. Some of the best drivers in the area and the country at this point here. We've got national champions throughout the field. Uh, we've got those, some of the top three uh, or people with top three experience in the likes of Kyle Busch, also in the likes of Derek Griffith, um, multi-time uh, winner in the NASCAR Cup Series as a spotter in the Xfinity Series. Derek Nealon piloting that number 90 machine. Um, a lot of these drivers making their way back from the big track here at Loudoun uh, to put on one heck of a show here for you folks tonight. Like Randy kept saying, this is why you're here. This is what you spent your hard-earned money for. This is why you got out of work a little bit early today to come and sit in these Beautiful blue grandstands here at Lee USA Speedway. The Rodfather Pro Stocks, guaranteed to put on one heck of a show here. You got your 2022 Rodfather Pro Stock champion, Brandon Parker, in the field as well, too. He knows how to get around this place. One of the few drivers, I believe only three in the history of the American Canadian Tour, to win his first ever start in that touring series. He's in the 32 machine. I'll tell you what, it, Charlie, this is the barn burner. You called it right earlier. A tough break for the 18, heading pit side already. Maybe having uh, issues with an overheating situation. If nothing else, this is just amping up the show even more, folks. We're getting heat in these race cars. Like I said, we're pulling Frankie Eldred out of the infield here. We are only building anticipation here. Kyle Busch starting fifth on the field here. You got the front row, Joe Duiron and Angelo Belsito. Not a single driver in this field, I don't believe, has not won a race at some point throughout their career. One of the most stacked fields I have ever seen for a pro stock feature event. They got 125 laps on tap here for $10,000 to the winner, presented by the Rodfather himself. These are your Rodfather pro stocks. And again, anticip anticipation building here, Randy. And I, I, I am just right beside myself. I'll tell you what, you think the excitement's here. What do you think's going on in these cars? These drivers are buckled in, strapped in, ready to go, sat through the national anthem, and now are taking these quintessential, so but sure, pace laps. They're itching. They're ready to go. Casey Call, 
does he become the twenty thousand dollar man? That's a that's an incredible question there, Randy, the driver. I believe out of Seabrook, New Hampshire, in the number 90 New Hampshire there, brought home $10,000 one year ago by beating Tyler Reddick right here at the very same Lee USA Speedway. He has an opportunity to do that again for his second year in a row and possibly become the $20,000 man. But we've got multi-time champions throughout the field here. We're going to have Frankie Eldridge out here. And folks, pick your driver. Pick your favorite car. Get up, wave your hat, wave your hands. We're going to fire these drivers off here in just a lap. The salute you. Wave them off, folks. Wave your neighbor. Wave your arm. Wave whatever you've got. They see you. They're ready to go. They're waving back. We're excited. We're ready to put the hard pedal down. Pace car. Lights are off. We'll be going, Charlie. Green this time by. Lights are out on the pace car this time by. Berwick, Maine, and Auburn, Massachusetts are your front row. The 73D and the 8 machine. Gonna bring them two by two by two down through turns three and four. Direct your attention to the flag stand. Chief Starter throws the green right now, and we are racing. Dave Tibbetts, one by one. The white red. What? Balsino, hot on the top side. Going high, wide, and handsome here at the center of speed. Two by two, we remain throughout the field here. Joey DeWyron trying to command the race lead here as we're going to go single file here through our top four. Kyle Bush to the inside of Garrett Hall. He wants to break up into the top five. Now look at the battle ensue further back. The 8 NC just got cut off by two in the 72. Kyle Bush. On the inside, the 94 to rock is outside. Las Vegas, Nevada, and Scarborough, Maine, right now duking it out for the fifth spot. We've got a two time Cup Series champion in the inside of a multi time Pro Stock Series winner, Garrett Hall, duking it out side by side yet again. Door handle, door handle through turns three and four for the fifth spot. We've got one in the books, two this time by. Excuse me, four. Uh, Joey DeWyron. I don't think he's saving anything, Charlie. He's just going to let that 7 3D roll to the front. Joey DeWyron, notorious for being able to save tires there in that 73D machine. The driver out of Berwick, multi time Granite State Pro Stock Series champion, knows how to set the field here. Bringing along Angelo Belsito and Joey Paul Wartrek rounding out your top three. Joey Paul in the 97. Solid player he is. Now gets to the back up in the 8 of Belsito. Challenging for the second spot. We are all in line as we are completing lap number seven. Seven laps in the books. That means that we've got about 117 to go here. Garrett Hall kind of falling back onto the front bumper of Kyle Busch here, who leads the way up ahead of Gre Derek Griffith and Wayne LOL Jr. as the top three continue to break away from the rest of the field. Six, seven, and eight. Kyle Busch. Garrett Griffith, Wayne Helliwell. We saw the last time the Pro Stocks were here. Helliwell and Griffith put on the show and show. And now they are here again, nose to tip. Early stages on here right now. Nine laps, ten laps, to go, or ten laps into the books this time by as we cross the checkered uh, line here. Everybody now kind of falling into a rhythm, a groove, if you will, seeing what they can save till the end of this 125 lap main event. $10,000 is a lot of money, whether you're a professional or the guy that does this out of your shop. Right now is Angelo Belsito attacks Joey Dwyer for the race lead. Belsito coming up to lap traffic, goes to the inside of Dwyer. He's looked multiple times. He likes that too. He keeps the the nose in. Maybe not just quite yet. Everybody minding their P's and Q's right now. Again, top three kind of in their own little area code compared to the rest of the field here. Fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Like you said here, just trying to maintain, see what they can lead to the end of the race here. Another little area code there, and then we fall back to the number 17 Massachusetts of Eddie McDonald, who leads the third pass. Eddie Mack, no stranger to the Lee USA Speedway. I had a great talk during the banquet this season. He said he made himself hot for him. That was the first job. 
All sorts of things that you can learn your way in the motorsports world. Making popcorn, certainly one of those. Right now, though, battle shaping up for the lead. Angelo Belsino all over the back bumper of Joey Dwyer in the number 73. He is the top two, trying to squirt away a little bit from the former Oxford 250 champion, Joey Balawarczyk. Belsino has had contact twice. Usually it's, whoa, right here on the front stretch. Down in the third, one and two, Belsino is the new leader. Belsino with the boot scooting, booking down through turns one and two here. Joey DeWyron may return the favor here, trying to get back up under, underneath the eight machine as the top three now, bringing Joey Paul Warchuk back up into the mix. It's always been the call. The first one is I'm here. The second, if you choose the line. The third is, if not, I'll choose it for you. Belsino with the... Look to victory lane. Further on back to the pack, Kyle Bush seeming to struggle here just a little bit, getting passed by uh, not only Garrett Hall early on, but now Wayne Hellwell moving around his way of the 18 Auto Park Chevrolet. Now Derek Griffith trying to find a way around the Las Vegas native. Wayne Hellwell Jr. has got that 27 on a walking rail. Training towards the front, now sets his sights on the 94 of Garrett Hall, but he just fooled both Griffith and Bush. Well, how to get around the New Hampshire Center is speed. Kyle Bush just pulling over, letting Derek Griffith on by. Still very early on in this race here. We got about 105 laps left to go here. Over 19 in the books. 20 this time by as uh, Angelo Belsito continues to pace the field over Joey Dwyer and Joey Kyle Warjack. Traffic car of the 18. Trying to get by now is Joey Pole in the 97. The top three get through lap traffic. It is Belsito, Dwight, and Joey Pole. Randy, let's look at this top five that we have here right now. Our race leader, Angelo Belsito at Auburn, Massachusetts, a multi-time Pro Stock Series winner, a winner in the modified ranks as well, too. Just behind him, a multi-time Granite State Pro Stock Series champion, followed by an Oxford 250 champion, followed by a Pro All-Star Series champion, followed by a Beechridge Motor Speedway champion. That is your top five right now, folks. If we don't have a stack field, then I don't know what it is. That's a pedigree to be all pedigrees, for sure. This is short track racing at its finest. Thank you folks for joining us tonight here at the Leo Speedway. Shit. Because this is the show. Shout out to everybody over on Nash Vision as well too. That's N-H-S-T-R-A Vision.com. We got a packed house online as well too. Comments are flooding in. Uh, what an incredible show here. We have our Rod Father Pro Sock $10,000 to win show here. Lap traffic starting to come into play here just a little bit as Angelo Belsito is navigating that perfectly as is Joey DeWyron and Joey Paulo Arte. Belsito uses the lap traffic to hopefully hold on competitors. Wayne DeWyron and Paul. Doc Piper in the 53 is the uh, lap bar. But as we are turning them off, lap 26, Belsito has set sail. Top three with some clear sailing here. Now further on back to back, Kyle Bush in that eight machine, looking to the outside here, trying to make something work here in that Archie St. Hilaire, Keen Parts Chevrolet, trying to just find whatever he can here for his first time at Lee Center, or Lee USA Speedway, New Hampshire Center of Speed. The battle for sixth and seventh, Wayne Halliwell just gets passed by Darren Griffith, and now Halliwell pulling push with him. Kyle Bush trying to navigate lap traffic along with your race leader, still trying to hang on to the outside portion of our top 10 here. Uh, he is in the eight spot currently between Wayne Hallowell and Eddie McDonald as we've got traffic here now. Bush making a move to the inside of Wayne Hallowell Jr. We got donuts on the side of the eight car. A little rubber news racing, Black Bart showing. Kyle Bush takes to get by the 27 of Wayne Elliwell Jr. Now tries to reel in the 12G of Sarah Griffith. But Bush all over Elliwell. No stranger to victory lane here at the Ready to rock it tomorrow. We said it earlier. We were maybe looking at some people saving it, seeing what's going to be left here at the end of 125 laps. Kyle Bush maybe flipping the on switch a little bit here as he's coming up on the back bumper as Joey Paula Warchek goes up and smoke down the back stretch. Oh, it's not great for Joey. Car looks like it's coming apart in the 97. 
Hopefully he's not dumping anything on the track. Black flags are good for podcasts, but not what you want to see on the racetrack there. Joey Palowarczyk receiving the black flag there to pull that number 97 New Hampshire off the racetrack. That's another spot for the rest of our top 10 there as uh, Ryan Kuhn, Derek Griffith, Garrett Hall, Kyle Busch and Wayne Hallowell get around it beautiful. Holy moly, look to the outside. There goes Griffith in the middle lane. Coming out turn number two. And Q, oh, caution on the racetrack. We got a yellow out for the first time here tonight for our Rodfather Pro Stock $10,000 feature event. We're going to re-rack the field here, folks. Get everybody square back away in their proper positions. We've got 33 laps in the books here so far who saved a little bit here as we are under 100 laps to go 92 to be exact here for the remainder of this feature event we got some cars pulling up off the raceway here maybe making some adjustments or calling it a night charlie it's still early on in the race maybe we go catch a tire maybe change some tire pressures do a little jack bolt twisting something's got to happen if you're at the back of the field now it's get ready to go. If you're in the back of the field at this point, you have absolutely nothing to lose. You've only got 33 laps in the books here, folks. Just under 100 to go. An absolute prime opportunity to make adjustments here to see if you can come back out here and come from the back of the pack all the way up through the field. Not to be lost in that fact. That is something that Casey Call kind of did last year. He kind of hung around the middle of the pack there, made his way back up to the lead, and was duking it out with uh, NASCAR superstar Tyler Reddick for the win. So keep an eye out for a lot of these other drivers coming out of the pit area here, possibly making some adjustments that are going to light those cars on fire here and see what they have for the remainder of 125 laps. It is still anyone's race, but Anthony Belsito, what a great young hot shoe this kid is. In the Bellboys Trucking Inc. number eight, doing such a great job. He timed it accordingly, paced his way through, got it where he needed to be, and then shot by Dwaran. He gave him a couple of shots to move him, but he was letting him know, I want that spot. And, and again, folks, we kind of did it a little bit earlier here, but without any names, we're going to go with a pro stock and modified winner. Granite State Pro Stock Series champion. Pro All-Star Series champion. Pro All-Star Series champion again. Uh, uh, Beach Ridge Motor Speedway champion. Two-time NASCAR Cup Series champion. Former Pro All-Star Series and American Canadian Tour champion. That is your current top seven on the racetrack. Not to be left out is Eddie McDonald, who also has championships to his credit. Brandon Barker is your current and reigning Rodfather Pro Stock Series champion as well, too. Championships and race wins are littered throughout this entire field here, folks. And I, 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 this is an incredible stat just to look out on the racetrack and see who's out there right now. Talk about shining stars. They've got it right there, right in front of you. Everyone here at the Lee USA Speedway is in ready fashion. Victory Lane will come soon enough, and we'll see who's going to take the checkers and the check for 10G. Hey, I don't care if you are a multi-million dollar race winning NASCAR driver or if you're the guy that does this out of your garage. $10,000 means something, folks. That means a lot. It is one of the highest paying super late model races in the area here on a casual, beautiful, blue, blue sky Friday night. We don't care about rain here at Lee USA Speedway. We got a packed house here, folks, for $10,000 on tap. Let's go. Gotta go back green next time, but our officials are they just double checking that Joey Pohl wasn't dropping a lot of fluid onto the track. Here comes the 90K, Derek Nealon. He needed some adjustments. Let's see if he can run spotter up to competitor and see what happens. Derek Nealon certainly no slouch uh, behind the wheel of any form of race car. Uh, he won a, a couple limited races back in the day at Beach Ridge Motor Speedway. Uh, has some super late model experience or pro stock experience now, whatever you want to call it, uh, in that number 90 machine. Uh, the pedigree of that race car as well, too, uh, has some championships behind it, too. Uh, also with Rusty Poland pre preparing that machine. Uh, that's a stout piece, folks, to keep an eye on here in that red and white and black number 90 machine. Watch his way, uh, watch him pick his way back up through the field here, folks. Not a single driver you can count out here in any way whatsoever. No one in this field 
is not up for the challenge. We're on lap 33 of 125. Nealon pulls off again. Something just not right with a 90K. Now we're going to take an extra couple laps here, folks, just to make sure that we have an all-clear racetrack here because we don't want this big finish to be affected by something silly like oil down on the racetrack or unprepared racing surfaces. So we're going to make sure that's 110% for these incredible top-notch race car drivers here. Again, in the fastest fendered cars in the area, the Rodfather Pro Stocks here at Lee USA Speedway. Yeah, good to see Joey Pohl in the 97. He's returned. Whatever was going on, whatever was leaking, could have been dumping on a header or something, causing that smoke situation. He's gone to the attention of his crew. Track officials are looking at him in turns three and four, making sure he's not dropping stuff as he's going. The leak should be fixed. Now, one thing to keep in mind, folks, too, is uh, according to timing and scoring, uh, the number 97 New Hampshire of Joey Paul Orchek Jr. is a lap down. Uh, so just keep that in mind here as he's going to try and work his way back up through the field here, try to get back on the lead lap uh, with the, the rest of this high talent here that we have for this feature event. Uh, keeping some heat in the racetrack as well, too, is what we're doing, making sure we have a nice, clean surface. As again, track officials making their rounds away. And uh, looks like we're parking some uh, some track trucks, Randy. We might be crossing them up here in just a moment. Yep, it looks like that way, Charlie. We're getting ready to go back green. Ready to go. Anyone got an odds on favorite? All right, folks. Let's get ready. Let's get amped up. Let's buckle back in. We're going to cross them up this time by still your front row, Auburn, Massachusetts, Angelo Belsito, followed by Berwick, Maine's Joey Dewiron. We're going to get them crossed up this time by two by two by two. We're going to go. We are going to go green flag racing here in just one lap. 33 laps in the books. You talked about it earlier, Charlie. I just saw the 8 and C go by. It's got tire marks on both sides of the car. Well, I think it's a pretty known fact. Kyle Busch, quite frankly, just does not care. He is here for one reason and one reason only. He wants $10,000 more in his pocket, but we're going to direct our attention back over to the flag stand here. Green flag is out, and we are racing! Dave Tibbetts throws it on. He throws it. He is the victor. Looking to take the eight back to the front and does so. But now, looks like Dwarren looking to make more of a challenge to his outside. From the pole to point, Angelo Belsito continues to command the race lead in that number eight machine. But here comes the RKM setup shot, Everett Auto Parts 72 machine of Ryan Coon, who's now under attack from Derek Griffith. Derek Griffith pile drives the 12G on the underside, looking to get to the leader. Away from Ryan Coon. But here comes the challenge. Up in the front, Dwyron to the outside of Belsito. Can he make it stick? Coming out of turn number four? Not that time. Further on back in your top five, here comes Kyle. High side hustling at Archie St. Hilaire, prepared number eight, North Carolina, to the outside of Ryan Kuhn. He goes. That's no slouch. That's your turret and reigning Pro All-Star Series North champion, Kyle Bush, trying to make the high side work. Kyle Bush works the outside. That's top three. In Belsito, Dwyron, and Griffith are going to have company from the ADNC momentarily. He's got the four spot. And look at that big for him. Top three breaking away here a little bit. But again, here comes Kyle. Top four spot for the eight machine as Angelo Belsito has a mirror full of Joey Dwyer trying to regain the race lead. Joey Dwyer has been all over that eight car. He's setting him up. If you watch, he's methodical. He's gone to the outside. He's cut down to the inside. He's looking to make Belsito make a mistake to have him to capitalize. Now here is where experience comes into play, folks. Here is where that top-notch capability and experience behind the belt of a Derek Griffith and a Kyle Busch come into play. They're just going to ride here for a little bit. 40 laps in the books here. We got 85 to go. We're only about a third of the way through this one. We're, there's absolutely no reason to start burning your race car up. We're going to save a little bit for the end of this feature event here, and we're just going to ride single file top four. Belsito, Dwyer, Griffith, caution is out. The 82 of Belageron. Ugh. 
piles it hard into the turn two wall. Yeah, the Kingston, New Hampshire driver having a tough driver's side hit there up off of turn number two. Uh, we're going to get these drivers slowed down on the raceway here. Make sure that that, uh, that particular driver is okay there. Uh, up on the backstretch wall, Bobby Belageron, again, another uh, uh, staple throughout the pro stock ranks here throughout Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts between uh, some pro all-star series races, but primarily that Granite State Pro Stock Series tour. As it looks as though the 82 is going to be rolling here. Uh, so round of applause for that driver. Looks as though he is all right. Uh, going to try and either tag back onto the tail end of the field here or bring it back pit side. Uh, but it looks as though we got some suspension damage possibly where we're just spinning the rear tires. So uh, looks as though driver is okay, though. And we're going to uh, re-rack the field here one more time again. 41 laps in the books, Randy. Anthony Belsito, former champion at the Seekonk Speedway, looking to be the victor tonight. That eight car's been solid. He's been on the top. He's been on the bottom. He's working his line, and Dwyron is trying to make him make a mistake. Not going to happen yet. I, I don't know that there is a single driver in this entire field that has never won a race. Uh, a good chunk of them have won championships, as we have said. This is one of the most stacked and stout fields in pro stock series competition that I can remember uh, for quite some time. And again, we're uh, going to calm the pace down here just a little bit. 41 laps of the books, 84 to go. So just about a third of the way through this one here. Uh, Angelo Belsito, Joey Duiram have kind of uh, commanded the race lead back and forth here in the early stages thus far. Uh, Derek Griffith, Kyle Busch, obviously no dummies behind the wheel of a race car by any means whatsoever. They've got something up their sleeve. There's always an ace in the hole, uh, especially for that driver out of Vegas. He knows how to play cards, and I'm sure he's pretty good at it. Sure is. No matter which the size up is, he's gone to the top. He's worked the bottom. The car shows it by the marks. We've seen him work the top and bottom. And we've also seen Derek Griffith. Very crafty. Again, you said it. The word is methodical. He looks to the high side, finds the window. The car sticks. He moves it forward. If he gets it, he's got it. If it doesn't work, he resets his sights on that next competitor in front of him. Well, I mean, especially between him and Joey Dwyer and Angelo Belsito as well, too. They're not really known for tearing up race cars. They're, they're not known for ripping fenders and doors off of these things. They know how to keep that race car underneath them and have something to show for at the end of this race. And, and one of the most famous quotes of all time, you must first finish to finish first. You got to get to the end of these races, folks. And all of these drivers know exactly how to do that. Kyle Busch working his way back up into the top five here after laying down an absolute heater of a single car qualifying lap, uh, getting relegated back to the tail end of the top five with a top nine inversion uh, from a young fan, Andrew, in the stands here, picking out of that 10 cam. So Kyle Busch, again, methodically working his way back up through the field here, as has Derek Griffith, like we've talked about. Not to count out, though, further on back in the field, that blue deuce, Nick Cusack. Uh, he's had a couple of good strings of runs here at Lee USA Speedway. Just a couple times ago, uh, finishing second uh, for the... Uh, for the Rod Father Pro Stocks, also finishing fourth last time out here. Uh, he knows how to get around Leo Say Speedway, a former champion of Beach Ridge Motor Speedway in the Wildcat ranks and working his way up into the late models. He's no dummy to victory lane either. Uh, just ahead of him, uh, the 32 Brandon Barker we've mentioned. He is your current and reigning uh, Lee USA Speedway Rodfather Pro Stock champion. Just ahead of him, Wayne Hellowell Jr., no stranger to victory lane. It doesn't matter the race car or the racetrack, uh, that's for sure. Um, no, big shout out, too, to the number 44 of Trevor Sanborn, the mayor of Parsons Field, Maine. Um, they're doing something a little bit different here with the, the rest of his 2023 season. Uh, you know, get, getting, uh, getting some different different experience under his belt this year one of the most decorated and experienced drivers in the field trevor sanborn in that 44 machine bringing the richard moody chevrolet here to lee usa speedway i was talking to him earlier for the first time in quite some time randy um just the way that their schedules have worked out prior he had no reason to uh kind of come in here while racing for other championships in late model racing uh so good to see trevor back here uh with a competitive uh, top 10 spot so far right here or just outside the top 10 I should say, in that 44 machine. And the Heliwell family, always dominant no matter where they go. You can never count out people like the 27. Wayne Heliwell Jr. and Derek Griffith, two weeks ago, were the show. They put on the show shows. Wayne Heliwell maybe just saving his equipment, laid back there, waiting. Barker, I talked to Brandon earlier, and Brandon said, you know what? 
I practiced that eight car last week. He said, it's pretty good. I said, so compared to yours, is it better? He said, mm, it might be a tick. But I know how to get around the USA Speedway. Hey, there's nothing, to be, there's nothing that you can substitute for seat time. And I don't care how many NASCAR championships you've won. If you've never come or even seen the high banks of New Hampshire here, um, it's going to put you a little bit behind the eight ball compared to a lot of these drivers who come here, uh, whether it be on a weekly basis or uh, multi-times a year throughout the, uh, the the traveling series that come into town here. Uh, so Kyle Busch kind of working behind the eight ball here, but you absolutely cannot count out the two-time NASCAR Cup Series champion, uh, Kyle Busch, in that same car that also finished second just one year ago with Tyler Reddick behind the wheel. Um, so certainly a, a stout piece, a stout team with that Archie St. Hilaire program. Uh, they know how to get uh, some race cars around this joint, uh, the 3.8 high bank mile here of Lee USA Speedway. Um, again, there's really not much more we can say other than you can't count out a single driver here, Randy, at all. Not even one. Not at all. Sitting back there minding his business is the 93 of Ryan Green. His dad, a longtime competitor, Whatever he's done to the DNA, it works. And I'll tell you what, they can't be some of the nicer folks to talk with pre-race. They were excited. I said, how's it feel? He says, eh. I said, what does that mean? He says, just what I said. It's kind of eh. Uh, Ryan Green's also the type of driver. He is not going to show you all his cards. He's not going to tell you everything that he has uh, on top here in his uh, in his number 93 program there. He knows how to get around here. He has found victory lane multi-times uh, here at Lee USA Speedway, too. So, um, again, dude, we cannot reiterate it enough. This is one of the most stacked and competitive pro stock fields to date that I can remember, and I've been doing this for over 20 years, Randy. Um, I, 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 I am so impressed by the talent that has showed up here for this $10,000 to win show, uh, and we are looking like we're going to have a clear racetrack here in just a little bit as we bring off the uh, number 82 of Bobby Lageron back to the pit area. He can hear you folks. Just give him a courtesy clap. We really appreciate him coming in. He'll get that 82 car fixed and get back into competition, I'm sure. Now again, folks, 41 laps in the books. 84 are going to remain. Angelo Belsito, Joey Dwyron, your top two just behind them. Another stacked row is going to be Derek Griffith, the, pro, the former Pro All-Star Series national champion. To his outside, two-time NASCAR Cup Series champion Kyle Busch. That is your second row. All right, folks, we're going to cross about this time by. Two by two by two, we are going to go. One of the most competitive late model fields to date here at Lee USA Speedway. 41 laps to the books, 84 to go. We're going to go green flag racing here in just one lap. Lights are out on the pace car. Belsito with Dwyer to his outside. Griffith, Kyle Busch in the next spot. And then Garrett Hall, right, soon. The ever spellbound Wayne Halliwell Jr. and our reigning champ were getting into the zone. They're going to drop the flag. Dave Tibbetts says, let's go racing. Angelo Belsito with a loud pedal back from the corner point down through turns one and two. But here comes Joey Dwyer strong on the outside. Two by two. We're going to remain down the backstretch. Double them up for the top spot in second and third. Kyle Bush looking to the outside. Contact. Bush working the high line. And now, holy sandwich, here we come. Belsito almost ended up a sandwich between Griffith and Dwyron. Dwyron. Almost three wide there for the lead. Kyle Busch trying to get back down, but Garrett Hall said, absolutely not. I want the four spot. Now under attack is the Las Vegas native. Kyle Busch is under Garrett Hall to the bottom side. We're wrapping the outside. Hall says, you want the outside? Stay up there. Now gets that four spot. He's going to dig in and really set his sights on the eight car of Angelo Belsino. Eights are wild between third and fourth here. Angelo Belsino now to the back, or to the front bumper of Kyle Busch, who gives him a little bit of a shot up off a of turn number two. Here comes Kyle Busch for third. Oh, sideways almost, loses a grip. Belsito through the middle, goes down to the inside. Your leaders take off, but the battle ensues for third. 
Now, coming through is Hall in Heliwell. They're watching the two eight cars battle it out in Belcito and Bush. And they're going to set their sight to move their car. Top two here, starting to break away just a little bit. Angelo Belsito seemingly holding up Kyle Busch just a little bit. Kyle Busch playing nice so far as he remains in the four spot as eights are wild here still for the second row. Almost the last 15, Dwyer is still your leader. Derek Griffith in the 12G, and then Anthony Belsito, Kyle Busch, Garrett Hall, Wayne Helliwell Jr. That is your top six. Kyle Busch starting to fall off here just a little bit, coming back to the grass of Garrett Hall, the number 94 machine. Things are calming down here just a little bit as we're going to have 50 laps in the books this time by single file. We remain Joey Dwyer, Derek Griffith, Angela Belsito, your top three. Everything pretty much in a straight line. Lap number 50, your leader Dwyer has found some real life back in the seven. Maybe it was just the tires needed to cool down a little bit to give a little bit more grip on this racing surface here at the New York Center. Now further on back in the field here, uh, Trevor Sanborn, the mayor of Parsons Field, finding his way up into the top 10, getting around Jimmy Renfrew Jr. in that double zero. But back up front, we've got Derek Griffith now hawking the back end of Joey Dwyer in the 73 D as the top two continue to break away with 52 in the books. Further back in the field, the battle ensues between Casa Grande in the 7 CT and the 93 of Ryan Green. Side by side, and then here comes the Casey Cole into the mix in the 90. The $10,000 man trying to repeat for the second year in a row, but he's going to have quite a bit of work to do to get his way back up into the mix here for the race win as right now it has been dominated so far by Joey Dwyer in the Berwick Main native in the 73D but here comes Rudolph the Red Nose race car Derek Griffith up under his back bumper getting up to the bumper setting his sights waiting for Dwyer to make a mistake that's not going to be quick Dwyer is a sharp cat behind the wheel of 73D but Griffith also has turned many a lot here at the Lee USA Freeway. And he is tightening, tightening his play spot, getting to the seven. Further on, back in the back here, just a little bit. Trevor Sanborn, who peaked up into the top 10 just a couple laps ago, now stalking the back bumper of Nick Cusack in the two machine. The mayor of Parsons Field now going inside of the Scarborough main native of Nick Cusack as he walks up just a little bit for the ninth spot. Single file, we remain up front. Joey Dwyer Derek Griffith and Angelo Belsino, your top three. Now, rounding that out is gonna be Kyle Busch in the four spot and Scarborough Mains, Derek Garrett Hall with Wayne Hellwell all over the back bumper of the 94. Luke Scooten was right, here comes Hellwell, diving to the inside. Got Hall pinched up on the outside. Not gonna stick, he looks for the middle line. Comes down into one and two, and drops the hammer. Hall says no way. The 94 car still holding on to P5. But the challenge, they're back in the show. Kelly well, not willing to give an inch, and neither is Hall. The battle right now is for the fist by Garrett Hall. Already won here once this year at Lee USA Speedway. Under attack from Wayne Hellowell Jr., the Oxford 250 champion, the Pro All-Star Series champion, the American Canadian Tour champion, Wayne Hellowell to the bottom side of Garrett Hall for the fifth spot. Hellowell now drops the hammer, puts the long hard pedal down, gets that position. Hall looks to cross him over, tries it. Hellowell makes the jump and takes off for fifth. Joey Dewar, we're gonna wrap the bottom side here through turns three and four, bringing along Derek Griffith and Angelo Belsito. Halfway down, halfway to go this time by cross flags in the air for your Rod Father Pro Stock feature event. We have now 63 more laps, 62 more laps to decide who's gonna take home $10,000. Is it Joey Duarred? Is it going to be Derek Griffith? Does Belsito get back to traction? Or is it the rowdy one in Kyle Bush that would love the pocket 
Ken G. Has Kyle Busch left anything to give in that number eight North Carolina machine? Again, prepared by the Archie St. Hilaire crew, CorvetteParts.net, Chevrolet, trying to get back up in the mix here with Angelo Belsito now, kind of in his own little world in the third spot. Here comes Kyle Busch, though, trying to bring home at least a trophy tonight. Would love to have at least a podium finish, saying to his guys, hey, look what I did on Friday night. But Nealon knows where he is, so, you know, he can't really surprise the group. That is true. Derek Nealon, again, the spotter for Kyle Busch in the NASCAR Cup Series that you see each and every Sunday this week. They are just down the road at Loudoun, New Hampshire, coming in from the big track here. They're trying to invade what we have is, uh, 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 the best weekly show in the league right now, Lee USA Speedway. He's trying to break up into the top three, bring home a trophy like we said. He wants to bring it back to the big track. Sean McKnight, or Sean Knight, in the 25, goes to the top side. He is a lap car. Leaders, hot and heavy. Oh, here comes the aid of Kyle Busch. Drops to the inside to get by the lap car. Here comes your challenge. Griffin, tightening up. Here it comes. Newport comes down the back stretch. Dives to the inside. Gets his nose in. Pitches court. Uh, excuse me, pitches to wire it up. Here goes Griffin, looking for the lead, and he's going to have it. Coming out of two, Byron says, no way. Derek Griffin being cautiously aggressive here, feeding Joey the in the corner, just a little bit down through turns one and two, using that right front fender, but not egregiously in any way whatsoever. Falls back in line to the second spot. Here comes Angelo Belsito for the second spot. Here comes Kyle Busch for the fourth spot. Top five breaking away. These cats are putting together everything they've got. The wire, he's running away now because Belsito's challenging Griffin and making him work, taking the heat away. So the challenge from Griffin backs off. This is exactly what Kyle Bush wants to see up ahead of him. He wants to see them slicing and dicing up ahead, slow them down so he can catch up just a little bit and use all of that experience underneath his cap to try and break up into the top three as the top three are under a blanket, down two turns three and four. Dwyron still holds the lead as he crosses the strike line, 74 in the books. Now Griffith has got a bumper. Solo Del Cito in the eight. Kyle Bush, I think you're right. He and Helga are biding their time. Biding their time with 50 laps to go. This time by 75 laps in the books. 125 on tap here to complete the $10,000 to win show. Joey DeRoyland maintaining pace up front with Derek Griffith all up in his grill, if you will, with Angelo Belsito just behind him. And Kyle Puss is just trying to get up within fingertips grasp of that top three because, again, he didn't show up here to run for it, Randy. Sure did, and he finished here coming to win and there's no doubt about it he may be just having some time letting the tires work in getting uh, having something left i can guarantee when we get to 10 laps to go he's going to change things totally up. it's certainly going to be something to watch out for here is kyle bush slowly chipping away at that lead that has the, those top three have put into place here as last time by, he was actually a couple hundreds quicker than your top three, uh, especially your second place driver. So Kyle Bush working his way up into the top three here, chipping away with only about five lengths now between him and them. And now heavy lap traffic comes up to our leaders. They exit turn number two. They're gonna have a full five cars in front of them that are lap cars to wire is a crafting veteran. Let's see how these guys can get by and make their way through. And we've seen many a uh, lap car cause an issue. This is certainly going to make things hairy here with 45 laps to go. All right, folks, we got one of the most stacked houses of all time here at Lee USA Speedway coming up on the lap traffic. Evan Bollier coming back to the grass of our race leader, Joey Iron in the 73D, bringing along Derek Griffith and Angelo Belsito. This is the opportunity Kyle Busch was looking for, trying to break up into that top three. Lap traffic may play into the favor of the 8NC. Oh, back further in the field. Something going on with the 32. Because the 44 Sanborn just walked in and took off. Kyle Bush now watching as Belsito 
looks to make a pick, I think, out of the 56, trying to get around the 12 G up here at Griffin. I think Griffin is going to give him the bottom side there, knowing that he can use Evan Bollier as that pick, like you said, but uh, Angelo Dosito feeding him the right front fender a little bit, and here comes Kyle Busch, trying to get up into the top three, looking at the inside of the other car, Angelo Dosito, now under attack from the two-time Cup Series champion. Griffith just did the slide sandwich, skip, and I'm gone. Between the 25 and the 56. Holy moly. How he got through there, I'll never know. Angelo Belsito and Kyle Bush just trying to dispose of Evan Bowyer now as Bush not in the preferred groove up off of turn number four here. Lab traffic not working in his favor. It did help him get up to the back bumper of the top three, but he now starts to fade back here yet again. Dwyer using the lap traffic very methodically going towards the front. He's got three more cars in front of him, and then he'll have safe sailing. But he's got to get by. He's getting by the 20 so far. Now, trying to make his way up through, but it's really hampering second, third, and fourth. Quick little fun fact about Jared Griffith in that 12G machine, the Hudson, New Hampshire driver doesn't run a single mirror in that race car. He has full trust and faith in his father, Dolly Michelitas, who is a seasoned veteran herself on the spotter stand. Now trusting her totally, guys, he's getting around lap traffic here to try and hop back down Joey Dwyer in the 73D. Joey Dwyer now comes up on Derek Nealon in the 90K, and then we'll have the 90 of KC Cole, trying to get by on the inside. He'd love to be able to come middle out of turn number four. Now, in the turns one and two, gets by Dylan, tries to get by. Something's going to ride with a 92 of Ryan Green. Casey Call now in jeopardy of almost certainly not going back to back here for $10,000. As he goes a lap down there through turns one and two, Derek Nealon also moving up a groove for the second place driver, Derek Griffith, going to the inside. Now, trying to get back up as we've got clear sailing for the leaders here for the foreseeable future as Derek Griffith now tries to hawk back down our leader. Down to the bottom side, gets by Paul and Nealon. Belsito stuck behind the 290. And here comes Paul. Oh. Nealon gets a little squirrely in turn number three. Looking to get to the high side. Bush says, dude, I gotta go, get out of the way. Yeah, here comes Kyle Bush yet again as the 90s are swapping some paint. We got a blue 90 of Casey Cole and a red 90 of Derek uh, Nealon here. Uh, they're swapping paint for further on back in the field as Kyle Bush now also gets around all the lap traffic as our top four single file here down the back stretch with 94 laps of books and 31 to go. Joey Tarrant, oh, the 40 of Mike Mitchell stopped in the infield on the turn three side. This may be exactly what oh. Kyle Bush was looking for here. He's going to re rank back to the outside of row number two. Up front, though, Joey DeWiron has absolutely dominated this one so far with some of the most methodical driving I have seen here at the local ranks. He knows how to not beat up that race car. He knows how to keep something underneath him for the end of a 125 lap feature event. He knows how to do it. He, he wants that $10,000 just as bad as anybody else. Derek Griffith to his outside. He had a couple opportunities there throughout that last green flag run to try and get around Joey Dwyron. But again, nice, clean, hard racing up front, setting the tone for this one as we're gonna have, Randy, about a 30 lap shootout. And a lot of folks heading to the pits, McDonald, Cusack, Brandon Barker, he's off. They're going to try to make a quick adjustment so they can get. But they're going to be back at the back of the field. And that's a field that's stacked at the front. Trying to get back up through it is going to be a challenge for all these guys. What do you think, folks? Look at who's out on that racetrack right now. Are you having a good time? You can do better than that. Are you having a good time or not? That's what we like to hear, folks. 30 laps or 31 laps are set to finish out this one. That's a typical Saturday night feature here at Lee USA Speedway to determine who is going to win $10,000 presented by the Rod Father himself. These are the Rod Father Pro Stocks. Joey DeWiron, Derek Griffith, Angelo Belsito, and the one and only Kyle Bush. Those are your top four. Wayne Hellowell, 
uh, is going to be in the uh, fifth spot to his outside. You've got Garrett Hall. He knows how to win here too, folks. It's still a crapshoot. We still got plenty of opportunities to decide who is going to bring home those three beautiful cups that we have down at the flag stand there presumably made by mainly award steve perry doing a heck of a job with those cups right there now to only solidify even more ten thousand dollars in your pocket and beating one of the most stacked fields in all of pro stock history is a trophy to some weight to it randy that's a that's a cup if i've ever seen a cup and that's got some weight to it and I don't know about you or me or whatever, if you're of age, but I'd be drinking a beer or three out of that by the I end of the night. I was just thinking the same thing. If we drop that over to the checkered flag pub and we filled it, maybe our field would change. Hey, de depending on who is going to win this race or even be the rounding out of the top three, that very well may just end up at the bar. We don't know, folks. Uh, if you are of age, don't be shy. Head on down to the... Uh, you know, what do we call it? The checker flag, flag pub, black flag tavern, whatever it whatever. is. It doesn't matter. They've got the goods. You've got the money. This is another incredible show here at Lee USA Speedway. I am so excited. Uh, we've got so much good racing here left, not only in this race, but we've got a couple extra races at the end of this night at a bonus uh, after this $10,000 to win show, folks. But Again, up front, Joey Iram setting the field here. He knows how to win these races. He knows how to keep that race car underneath him, Randy. And we've got 31 action-packed laps coming to you here. It's a Friday night shootout, folks. Is this what you came to see? Are you excited to see the end of this? Now, we've got the top four, some of the best top four in the country. Is your driver Joey Iron? is he going to win the race? How about Derek Griffith? Is that your driver? Is it Angelo Belsito that you came to see win? Or did you pay your money to come and watch Kyle Busch win this race? So much talent. So many laps. Laps are dwindling. Dwyer's held the lead. Derek Griffith could take it away. He's tried to snatch it multiple times to get by him. Interesting move here, Randy. Uh, leader lane choice. The leader, Joey Duiron, taking the outside here uh, for this late race restart. 31 laps are going to decide the feature winner of this event. Joey Duiron doing a, a kind of a left-handed move there. He's going to the outside, folks. Can Derek Griffith make the bottom side work with Dolly Mitchellitas in his ear? Kyle Busch, right directly behind your race leader in the 8NC, Angelo Belsino. On the downside, does he go with Griffith? Does the top work? Does the bottom play an advantage? Here we go. Coming to the green. It's a cat and mouse game. DeWiron, Griffith, Belsino, and Bush. Green's going to fly. Here we go. Green is out, and we are racing going down into turns number one and two. Joey DeWiron washes up. We're three wide. Here comes Kyle Busch. Yellow is out on the raceway. Uh, Seems as though race control is going to call back that restart there. A little bit of a jump on the bottom side from Derek Griffith. They're calling. We're going to give them one more chance here, folks, to see if we can get a nice, clean, even restart. Lights remain out on the raceway here. We're going to re-rack it one more time again. Derek Griffith to the inside. Leader lane choice taking the top side. That's Joey DeWiron out of Berwick. Angelo Belsito and Kyle Busch just behind them. Looking at the flag stand. Chief starter green flag is out, and we are racing. That time, DeWiron is doing a good job. He's the race leader. Derek Griffith trying to take it away. Here Three wide. Three wide down the back stretch for the race lead. Here comes Kyle Busch to the bottom. Kyle Busch digging in. He saved that aid for everything. He He's last line. Kyle Busch is up into a trophy spot now, but he wants an even bigger one. He's all over the back bumper of Joey DeWiron, who has controlled this race so far. Kyle Busch looking at the bottom side. Oh, oh yeah. Del Cito, back to the fourth. Here's Garrett Hall in the 94. But here comes the 27. 
of Wayne Halliwell Jr. They're dicing it up behind the top three. Kyle Busch loves what he sees in his mirror. He's going to use up the back bumper of Joe Dwyer and try to get up into the second spot. He looks high. He crosses it back under with the run down the back stretch. Looking to the inside. Kyle Busch to the inside of Joey Dwyer. Busch dropping the hammer, pulls into the inside. Drives the car up, has a little bit of contact with Dwyron. Looking to take the second spot. Bush still on the inside. Dwyron says, come get me. Here is where knowing the racetrack comes into play. Kyle Bush with that high to low move, trying to get underneath Joey Dwyron. But Dwyron knows that he can make the run up top. But look at Brandon Barker down the front stretch. Hood popping up in the 32 machine. That's your 2022 Rodfather Pro Stock Champion, Brandon Barker, as Joey Dwyer now crosses back over Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch hurts the top line. And Dwyer down to the low side. Busch has the advantage down the back stretch. Busch takes your second spot. Now he's going to try to track down. Dwyer's not letting him get away. Busch still works and will get the second place. 24 laps to go, folks. We got a typical short track shootout here to close this one out. Derek Griffith trying to put it to the best of NASCAR's ranks. Kyle Busch as he's got a 10-length lead over the 8 North Carolina. Derek Griffith setting sail. Lap 102 just clicked off. Comes down to take 103. Kyle Busch is in second. Joey Dwyron in third. Garrett Hall for your fourth. Angelo Belsino is your top five. Kyle Busch finding his home in the second spot right now. Has some work to do to catch back up to race leader Derek Griffith out of Hudson, New Hampshire. Trying to put it to the boys here. Kyle Busch coming in from the big track just down the road where dreams are made. He is now coming back down to race the super late model with some of the country's best, this region's best, if you will. He's going to try and see what he has left with 20 laps to go this time by. Here we go. Derek Griffith, Kyle Busch. Is there any left? Has Bush been saving that a car for this long run? He'd love to see this continue to go green because he gets faster and faster lap time. Derek Griffith would not like to see any kind of a question. Kyle Bush, Joey Dwyer, the seven. May have just used the car up. Does it have any more or will he just save it until the end? He'll be told next time by. That Archie St. Hilaire number eight machine finished second just a year ago by only a fender. As of right now, has about 10 car lengths to make up to get around Derek Griffith for $10,000 to win here. Time is winding down as we've got 17 laps to go. Joey Dwyer in his own little world in third as everything seems to calm down throughout the field. We're single file, 108 laps into it. Here we go. Derek Griffith has found every mark. He's going to continue to hit those marks. Kyle Bush sits in second. And Joey Dwyer in the seventh. Now the battle ensues back here for fourth. Belsito contact with the 94. He's got his hands all over the wheel of that A car. And works it hard through one and two. Pitches Garrett Hall up high has the advantage coming into turns three and four. The battle on the racetrack right now is for fourth. Angelo Belsito getting around Garrett Hall out of Scarborough. They're going to try and fall back in line here. 111 laps in the books. Back up front, Kyle Busch trying everything in his repertoire, everything in his wheelhouse to try and navigate and chip away at that race lead that the Hudson, New Hampshire driver of Derek Griffin has built up so far. We're only going to have 12 laps to go this time by. And at this point, Randy, if I am Derek Griffith, I have won a lot of races. I have won a lot of big races. It doesn't matter if it's a super late model or a super modified. It doesn't matter if it's a flat track or the high banks of Lee USA Speedway. He has done it all. He's made his way up into the truck series of NASCAR. He's made his way up into the Xfinity series of NASCAR. Tonight, he finds his way, leading the race of the $10,000 to win Rod Father Pro Stock feature event over the two-time NASCAR Cup Series champion, Kyle Busch. Ten laps to go this time by. Can he make it work? I'm telling you, Derek Griffith is focused. 
He wants this. You can tell. He's on his game. He said earlier, nothing could be better to beat and win this race. He is digging. He is making those laps work. He's counting them off. But the lead, if you look, by time, is narrowing. That Does Bush have something more left? That gap is seemingly getting smaller and smaller each and every lap. Kyle Busch trying to squeeze every last bit of what he has left in that 8NC Keen Auto Parts Chevrolet down the back stretch. He's trying to dig and dig hard and dig hard and dig hard, but he can't quite get to the back bumper of Derek Griffith as we're going to have seven laps to go this time by. Seven laps to get it done. In about that for an advantage. That is what Griffith has over Bush. But now, five laps, five car distance maybe. He's working a wheel. You can watch Kyle's hands. We can see it here in the tower. He is working that wheel. Everything he's got. Perks of having white gloves. You see every single wheel movement coming through the windshield of Kyle Bush there in that eight machine. That lead is shrinking ever more each and every lap. We're going to have five phalanges in the air this time by for five laps to go. Kyle Bush is head down, digging like Dale in that eight machine, trying to chip away at Derek Griffith for the race lead. Got three car advantage, maybe right now. Take it away from the seven of Joey Dwyer. Dwyer's got about the same distance between Kyle Bush and him for the third, or second and third spot. Griffith focused. Hitting his marks, coming middle index. He's been here. We talked to him last time we were here in victory lane. He was excited. He was ready to go. And now the hook's been cast. Bush is trying to reel Griffith then. Popsicle sticks in the air this time by Kyle Bush. Wheeling that eight machine for everything he has. He is making that gap smaller and smaller each and every single time around. The 3 8 mile high bank raceway here at Lee USA Speedway. White flag in the air for Hudson, New Hampshire's Derek Griffith. He has one more lap to go. Down the back stretch, he will hit the loud pedal. Five length advantage, down through turns three and four. Round of applause for Hudson, New Hampshire's Derek Griffith, who is $10,000 richer over Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch sings it in the second. Joey Dwyer in for third. Anthony Belsito in for fourth. Garrett Hall, Jimmy Renfrew Jr., Wayne Halliwell Jr. Trevor Sanborn, Curie Cross the Grande. But the victor is Dara Griffith. <laughs> Dave Tibbetts will hand him the checkered flag. Put your hands together, folks. Hudson, New Hampshire, proud prospect in Derek Griffith. Let him hear you, folks. He worked for it. All right, we're going to send it down track side to Charlie Sanborn the third. What do you think about that, folks? $10,000 was on the line here tonight. We got three of the best super late model drivers in the entire country. Rounding out our top three. We're going to bring the driver around here. The driver out of Berwick, Maine. He dominated early on, fell back a little bit. How'd that one go for you, Joey Dwyer? I probably shouldn't have taken the top. <laughs> uh, I, I shouldn't have taken the top. Um, I just got so loose into one on the restart. And uh, I knew if I didn't have a fender on Garrett, Derek to hold him down out of two, I was going to be in trouble, and uh, I was afraid that that was going to happen to me, and uh, instead I almost went into one and spun out, so frustrating. Um, I got to thank 
my entire crew, my family, uh, Peter Pettit for giving me an opportunity to drive this car. Um, year didn't start off very well, but uh, making headway here in the last three or four weeks. So uh, get it ready and go to White Mountain tomorrow and uh, try to improve by a couple. There's your third place driver, Joey Dewiron, folks. And we're going to make our way up into the top two now. The driver who started out in the desert of Las Vegas. He's made his way to the top. He's done everything that there is to do in a race car. He now finds his way down the street from the big track. How was that at Lee USA Speedway, Kyle Busch? Hot. <laughs> um, it's hot. Uh, I sweat a lot anyways, but I'm, I'm smoked after that one. So, uh, no, that was fun. Really appreciate, um, you know, Lee Speedway and uh, Keen Parts and Chevrolet and... Uh, Weir's Motor Sales, Buick GMC, Fisher. Uh, it's pretty cool to just come out here, have some fun, participate in front of a great crowd. Thank you all for coming out and supporting your local short track. So um, takes everybody up there to make what we do happen, you know. So uh, it's great to have good, strong racetracks around the country, uh, especially up here in the Northeast. I know how cool the fans are and how much they love their racing. So what is it that you needed for uh, Derek Griffith there at the end of the stage of that race? Yes. Um, <laughs> A little bit of turn, a little bit of drive. Um, if, if, if I could have the same turn with a lot more drive, you know, I would take that for sure. I feel like that's kind of where they were beating me all night just a little bit. I just could not accelerate out of the turns the way I needed to. But um, we, we gave it all we had. She was smoked it there at the end. I, mean, I was, she was, tires were, everything. So um, just uh, overall, um, you know, first time being here, it was a f really fun track. I mean, it's really technical and a lot of different things that you can kind of search around and help yourself with. So I was doing a lot of that. But um, nothing as good as that 12. Well, Rowdy Nation certainly showed up in droves here tonight, and I think the question that everybody wants to hear is, uh, we going to see you here again? Yeah, absolutely. Invite me back. We'll, uh, we'll figure it out. You know, it was a great time coming up here this time around, so uh, again, I enjoyed it and, you know, wish we were number one, but, um, you know, Derek seems to have a handle on this place. There is your second place driver, folks, just down the street from the big track, Kyle Busch. Now moving up. To victory lane, folks, the driver out of Hudson, New Hampshire. He's got Hudson Speedway on the quarter panel. He's made his way up into the top three, but tonight all that matters is Lee USA Speedway. Here is the $10,000 man, Derek Griffith. Woo! Woo! Man, I got to thank everybody. We had a terrible day to start the day. We had so many problems. Uh, the fuel pump broke, and I really got to thank Corey Casagrande for giving me a fuel pump. About 10 minutes before we were lining up, it broke right off the side of the motor. So uh, I really got to thank him. The guys worked super hard. We, we made it better all day. And, uh, yeah, look at, look at these people, man. It's awesome to see the crowd, and uh, hopefully they had a good show. And, yeah, it was fun starting in the back there and having some fun. You certainly know how to get around, it seems, any racetrack and any kind of race car. Like I was saying earlier, it doesn't matter if it's a super modified or a super late model. You always seem to find your way to victory lane, but you're obviously not doing it by yourself. So who do you have to thank here tonight? I got to thank Louie, my dad, Dolly, <coughs> excuse me, um, Bobby, uh, Sean. Man, the list could go on and on. I got to thank my girlfriend, Reed, the whole, I mean, John, John everyone, the whole gang. Um, and we're all, we're all thinking of... This one's uh, for Big Lou back home, too. We're, we're all rooting for him, and, and he's, uh, he's doing better and better. So this one's to him, and uh, hopefully he's watching. So uh, the bigger question I think everybody wants to hear uh, the answer to is, uh, we're going to see you down at the bar with that big trophy later on? Yes. There you have it, folks. <laughs> out of Hudson, New Hampshire tonight, he is the 2023 $10,000 man, Derek Griffith. Back up to you, Randy. Thank you, Charlie, for Victory Lane. Thank you, folks, for turning out. Thank you, Derek Griffith, pulling down the victory. Thank you, Kyle Bush, for coming to join us here at the New Hampshire Center of Speed.